See how much I want the Sabbath to stay here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I hope the video is better on Facebook now. I'm still live on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube. So I thank you for tuning in. Please like and share the video. Now, since today I'm not on a two-hour limit, I can take my time. I can take my time. So again, to everybody on Facebook, to everybody on Periscope, everybody on YouTube, grace and shalom, shalom. Again, please like, share the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I still want to get over a thousand subscribers just in case I have problems with the Internet and I can use my phone again. All right. So. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So, as y'all saw, I had some difficulties trying to stream through you, stream through my computer. You know, maybe my connection is just not good today. So now it's just, uh, I got everything separated. But I thank the Lord that I'm able to go on Facebook, I mean, on YouTube again live. All right. Thanks to to one of my brothers that let me borrow his uh, his webcam until I get my own. I wasn't thinking about this all this time. I should have been getting a webcam so I could go live back again on uh, on YouTube. So praise the Lord, hallelujah, in Jesus' mighty name for this. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's open up, and then we'll get into the lesson. Let's open up Isaiah 28. Much better visual. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. So let's go to Isaiah 28. And let's open up for the newcomers. <laughs> for the people that, that might get sidetracked by some people that we call Chris, Christian antagonists. All right. Let me also make a claim because, you know, understand the original Israelites were the original Christians. The Christian antagonists that I talk about all the time today are the ones that's trying to go against what Jesus taught, all right? And they like to antagonize people. They call themselves Christian apologists or urban apologists, but they're really antagonists. That's all it comes down to. So what I, why I opened up with these verses is to show you, and some, some Israelite antagonists too, is to show you balance and to show you how to obtain salvation. So let's start. Again, this is just to open up. This is not the actual lesson. I just always open up with these verses. Isaiah 28, verse 9. <clears throat> Whom shall he teach knowledge? Who is the he? He is the Lord. 
He's the one that has all the knowledge, all the wisdom and understanding. And who is he going to teach it to? Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. In Exodus 19, he told the nation of Israel that you would be a kingdom of priests for me. What does a kingdom of priests do? They have to go out and teach. They don't just sit around amongst each other and just say, yeah, the Lord said this. Well, yeah, I know. I know the Lord said that. He said that to me, too. Yeah, yeah. It, like no one's getting any knowledge. He meant for them to be the priest to the rest of the world, to help save the world. All right. To those that will listen. And them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Precept must be upon precept. Some people will tell you, you, and again, this is about my Christian and urban antagonists. They will tell you, they will tell you that you can't do it like that. You, you got to read the book in its context, which you do have to do. But when you're putting precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, like I will be doing today, they say you can't do that. That's that's not the word of God. It's like they really want you to read it like it's a novel, just straight through it, and that's it. There's so many messages that the Lord has for his priests to understand and then teach the rest of the world for them to understand. Now, how is he going to do this? Because we sinned against the Lord and we got sent around the world as slaves. So back then he knew this and said this through Isaiah. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. So you don't have to learn Hebrew. See, now I'm going after some Israelite antagonists that tell you, you must learn Hebrew or you ain't going to understand this. The Lord is a fair God. He's a just God. He's not going to put people in the fire just because they did not learn <laughs> Hebrew. He's not doing that. He had this book, which is the greatest book in the world, which is going around the world in every language for his priests to understand and then teach the other nations in their language. We could have done this voluntarily, but because we didn't <laughs> keep the commandments of God, he forced us. You going to teach the rest of this world because in Matthew 24, it says that this gospel shall be taught to the rest of the nations and then the, for a witness against them and then the end shall come so we're going to do it either way it go in every language with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people now when we're teaching how should we teach let's go to isaiah 8 when we're teaching as far as the priest of god the rest of the world how should we teach Isaiah 8, verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. There's no light in them. If they're not teaching from Genesis all the way to Revelation, that means Genesis to Malachi, the Old Testament, and the New Testament, which is Matthew to Revelation. They must teach out of all of that. So when you get Christian an urban antagonist telling you you don't have to keep the law no more. There's no light in them because they're not teaching from the law. It's that simple. If there's no light in them, they're not going to teach. Thus saith the Lord, thou shalt not this, thou shalt not that. All right. Also, with some Israelite antagonists, we don't believe in that New Testament. Paul is a liar. All of that stuff. Jesus never existed. All of that stuff. They're not teaching from the what? The law and the testimony. They're just trying to go to the law. Now, there's no light in them either. You must learn from Genesis to Revelation to get the whole picture that God wants us to know right now. Because there's more. Jesus got finished, you know, teaching his three and a half years. So. We already know how he's teaching us and then how we're supposed to teach. And now let's go to the end of the book and see who got who's going to get into the kingdom. 
because they did these things. <clears throat> Revelation 14, verse 12. Here are the patients of the saints. Here are the saints that go marching in. Right? Don't you want to be in that number when the saints go marching in? Well, let's see what the saints did to go marching in. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And in some people's terms who don't like the name Jesus and the faith of Yahweh. I was about to say it the old way. Yahweh or Yahshua, Yeshua, whatever name you want to call him in Hebrew. But in English, the faith of Jesus. So if you're keeping the commandments of God, which is the law, and you're keeping the faith of Jesus who taught keep the commandments of God, you can become a saint. It's that simple. That's almost the whole Bible really just <laughs> just, just put, to summed up, really. But, like I said earlier, there's other messages that we must get across. This is where we're going to do precept on precept because this is a message that really needs a lot of attention because it's too many people. Let's go ahead to Proverbs 18. Now, let's go ahead and start. The lesson which you see, which is the title, Tattletales. Now, I did this yesterday, and I had to skip over some uh, verses. I'm going through everything today. So sit back. If you do what I'm doing, I got the slow cooker on. <laughs> By the time I get done, food might be done. Yeah, this going to be a two-hour video. It may even go to two and a half because, I, hey, I... I've been thinking about switching them to Sunday mornings anyway, but I got too many people hitting me in class talking about, no, nah, don't be switching. You need to stay here because you. I like listening to you before I go to class. And I'm like, that's cool. But at the same time, I got sisters saying, well, I can't listen to you because I'm trying to do my hair and it's uncovered and stuff. So I'm like, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to decide which one I want to do. So let's go ahead and start this lesson. Tattletales. Tattletales are people, they, we're going to look at some tattletales in here, but we have people who love to tell on other people, who love to lie on other people, to try to make themselves look better to whoever they're telling it to. And that's very dangerous because the Lord is watching. So let's get into some some advice that the that the Lord said through uh, through King Solomon. All right. A lot of stuff. King Solomon, the wisest man to ever live. The Lord was working through him with, with some of these books. So let's go ahead and start reading Proverbs 18. We're going to start at verse four. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters. And the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Everything coming out your mouth is either going to be about the about life or about death. Which one are you going to speak? Will there be consequences after what you have spoken? Things we need to think about. Because our mouth, what? are as deep waters and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Let's go to verse. Oh, I forgot my little marker here. Hold on. Verse six, skip down to verse six. A fool's lips enter into contention and his mouth calleth for strokes. A fool's lip enter into either anger, foolishness, Always got to have something going, and his mouth calleth for strokes. He calleth for blows. His mouth can start fights. Saying the wrong stuff to the wrong people can get a wrong result. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. 
I really don't think other you can get other people into. We're going to get into that. Let's just keep reading. Let's keep reading. Verse seven, a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. It's his destruction. And his lips are the snare of his soul. Sometimes being a talebearer can get your own self in trouble. And we're going to deal with that with a couple of tales of talebearing. Let's go ahead to verse 8. The words of a talebearer are as wounds. The words of a talebearer are as wounds. Again, you can hurt a person. With your mouth. Sisters, I understand physical abuse is, 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 is not a good thing. What a lot of people don't understand, man, is verbal abuse is worse. Yes, physical abuse can leave scars, it could get people killed. But a lot of times, the things that come out of our mouth, sisters and brothers, can hurt a person for the rest of their life, especially if they're children and a parent says the wrong thing to the child. You ain't never going to be good. You ain't never gonna, You're going to be just like your daddy. Now that child see that daddy might be in jail or out on the streets or got a whole bunch of other women having other kids. I'm going to be like that. Same thing with the daughters. You just fast. You just like your mama, your grandmama, whoever. That's why we got to watch with the words that we say. That's that a lot of times that's speaking death. It's not speaking life. The words of a talebearer are his wounds. Now, in this case, the talebearer is going to somebody else, telling somebody else about something. That person does not like this person now. And they haven't even talked to that person. That's wounding that person now. And they go down into the uttermost parts of the belly. He also that is slothful. I didn't want to read that part. Let's skip down to verse. Let's skip down to verse 13. He that answereth the matter. This is what I was getting into. He that answereth the matter before he heareth it. It is folly and a shame unto him. If someone comes and tells me about another person that I ain't never talked to and I believe this person and now I'm looking at the other person as evil, it is folly. That's what the book say. He that answereth the matter before he heareth, it is folly and shame unto him. You've judged somebody else based off of what someone has told you. Now, I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people like to warn other people, hey, this person, you watch your back. You know what I'm saying? So that's OK. All right. I'm watching my back. But if you just rambled on and on, they didn't did this, did that, did that. Did, and you ain't never talked to the other person or, or saw the other person do it yourself. Now you're looking at that person in the wrong matter. And you may misjudge him or her. These are the things that King Solomon was saying the Lord was having him put out here. Let's go to verse 21. Ah, uh, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Which fruit are you trying to eat? Death or life? Because, again, let's read it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You could get somebody killed with your tongue. You can inspire someone, which is life, with your tongue. You know, after I did that lesson yesterday, I had a few people come to me and say, man, I was inspired. I was like, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. You have to try to either you need we need to put life in the people. That's what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to speak life, encourage, love one another. That's what he was talking about, along with the commandments, because that's what the commandments were doing, teaching about love. But death is, I don't like that brother. He did this, did that, blah, blah, blah. Have you even spoken to that brother at all once in your life? 
That's 21. Let's go into 1 Corinthians. So we're going to open up with that. 1 Corinthians 13. Keep your mark in Proverbs because we will be going. <laughs> we will be going back into Proverbs. Uh, what did I say? 1 Corinthians 13. Yeah, a lot of times, man, we, we will judge a person according to what another person has said and have never talked to that person. Never sat down with them, get a vibe with them and then say, oh, yeah, dude is like, you know, what the other dude told me. We don't do that. We just say, you know, OK, I believe you. And then won't say nothing. And then we're treating this other person in a certain manner which is <laughs> folly. First Corinthians verse four, first Corinthians 13 and verse four, charity suffereth long and is kind. What is this charity? This is love. So if you love a person and you're kind, you won't be talking bad about them. You won't be running to the officials and telling them, because, oh, yeah, we're going to get into that. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunted not itself. It is not puffed up. Love is not puffing yourself up. How do you also puff yourself up? By talking down about other people. Talking down about them to get yourself to raise yourself into something. And now you're puffed up. These are the things that we... That, that, that everyone has been doing. I'm guilty. I've done it. I haven't talked about people to get myself on a platform, but I have said stuff about somebody else based on what somebody else has told me. Come to find out when I sat down with the person, I was, I was, I was wrong, but that person was wrong too. So now I got to watch the person that told me this stuff. Food for thought, people. 1 Corinthians 13, let's skip down to verse 6. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Now, the world loves to rejoice in iniquity. There's nothing like iniquity to the world. Nothing like it. We will sit up and watch all types of iniquity on the television and enjoy it. All the talk shows like that we had back in, uh, I'm not going to say the 70 talk shows, like the 80s and the 90s was nothing. Of, it was all about sin. People fighting on there. Even today, Maury Povich, Jerry Springer. The world loves to see this stuff, even on um, uh, uh, social media. I could post up a, a video of two people fighting each other and get so many likes, so many comments. But if I post up something that's righteous, five people, that's, show, that's showing all of us the evidence of this world. We love iniquity. We love iniquity so much, like I was saying with Mari Povich. You go, you go to watch what other people have done, how they sin. Why do I want to watch people who sin? Same thing I forgot to mention yesterday. Housewives of Atlanta, housewives of whatever. All of that stuff is teaching our sisters how to sin. The book says, a what mouth? What is it again? A soft answer, turn away wrath. Is that what those people do on Housewives of Atlanta? What? No, it's girl, blah, blah, blah. Be this, be that, blah, blah, snap, go off. That teaches the young girls do the same thing. Rebel, fight, be angry. Sin. Maury Povich, again, you are not the father. So we're watching we're, the ratings are there. These shows are still there. Because people love to watch and see, oh, these two cheated on each other. The majority of the time, they ain't even married, but they got kids. Now, either she, now, the accusation is that she cheated. 
So they're trying to see if the child is the is the father's. Some of the times it's the man cheated with another woman, and now they're trying to see if the father if he's the father of that one. All of this is sin, and what does the world do? We rejoice in that. We rejoice in it. That's why we sit there and watch it. When did a lot of this stuff start with the television? When now I'm 51 years old. So when my mother and father were young, soap operas started all of this. It started on the radio. Before television, they had little soap operas because it was like an advertisement thing for I forgot the name of the soap companies back then. But it gradually it gradually got to where we're at right now. The soap operas was about people cheating in a community, in a hospital. All of this stuff was about sin, and we loved it. Rejoice it not in iniquity, but rejoice it in truth. We don't do that. We don't rejoice in, in, in truth. We rejoice in iniquity. We've been trained to do this. Let's go to verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child, and I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put childish things away. This is why I barely watch TV anymore. Everything on there is about sin. I don't rejoice in that. I don't rejoice in it. There's things I still watch every now and then. But as a child, we're, we're prone and foolish to do these things because we're being influenced by the prince of the power of the air. But as you become, but, but, but you can't stay as a child. You can't go around telling everybody business. You can't go around rejoicing in iniquity. Because the Lord is looking like, you love this? Okay. Let me mark that down. That's the whole thing that we're trying to deal with is not being a tattletale, a tail bird, and a busybody. Because what happens is, and oh, I forgot to tell you, the reason why those soap operas and all that was being um, put out there is because the man went to his job. The woman stayed home with the kids and took care of the house, right? What was the woman to do? If she got everything clean and the kids at school, there's nothing else to do. Her mind is idle. Most sisters to understand this. Your mind can get idle. Same thing with brothers. We're going to read about it. But your mind can get idle. And guess what? The soap opera's right there to entertain you. Housewives of Atlanta is right there to entertain you. Maury Povich, Jerry Springer, they're all there to entertain you. So guess what? Now that your mind is idle, Satan got a way to come in there and start messing with you. Cheaters. Oh, I can't stand cheaters. I'm a dude. I know I'm talking a lot, y'all. I got time. Oh, come on, man. Come on. Now, now they want to give me a problem. Facebook again. But anyway, let's get back. Cheaters. Right. I see somebody said as the world turns, all that stuff. Cheaters is to me. I hate it. I hate it because if and, and the reason I hate it. If you a faithful man and your woman is watching this. It's in your mind is idle, sisters. It starts coming into your head. Maybe my man, you start looking like he does do this. He does do that. And the next thing you know, there's chaos in the house because you think your man is cheating and he's not. Same thing with brothers and sisters. I mean, with brothers, if you staying at the crib and watching this. You start wondering about you, that spirit of jealousy come on you. That's why, like I said. I really don't really watch TV that much because I've seen these things and be like, that's a shame. It's training our people. But back to the childish ways. Being a tattletale is something that children does, did, or still do. When I was a child, I spake as a child and I understood as a child and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put childish things away. What's the use 
of me telling on somebody else because I want to look good. That's what children do. It's called sibling rivalry. That's what children do. They want to look good to mama or pops. And what do they do? They tell. Sometimes they lie. I've had my kids when they was younger. Let me tell y'all this one. All right. And I don't care if my kids care. My oldest daughter, I can't remember how old she was. I know they was under five, about five and four, or maybe six and five. I put some cookies on top of the refrigerator. And my oldest daughter, she she know how to try to get people to do things. And I hope she watching. And my other daughter that got in trouble, make her watch it. But anyway, she tricked my youngest daughter, I mean, my second oldest daughter, to get a chair, go on top of the refrigerator, get the cookies, come back down and take the cookies into the room. But not take all the cookies, get some out of the package and go back into the room. Right? Now, my second oldest daughter had no clue why she was doing this. Her big sister saying, yeah, do that. I've already told them, don't mess with these cookies. But she told her to go do it. So she does it. I come home. <laughs> I open the door. What's the first thing I see in front of the refrigerator? A chair. <laughs> I'm like, who did this? And when nobody saying nothing. Till I started getting angry. All of a sudden, my youngest daughter that went up there and did it said, she told me to do it. And I had to get the discipline down, but I got more on the oldest daughter because she knew better. And she tricked her youngest daughter. It's the sibling rivalry. People, when we're kids, we want to, if somebody does something wrong, we'll hold it against them as children too. You know, I'm going to tell on you what you did six months ago if you don't do this. Sibling rivalry, and that's childish ways. So to be a tattletale, to be a tailbearer, the busybody is a childish thing. It just is. Let's keep it moving. Let's go to Proverbs 22 because I've talked a lot. <laughs> Let's go to Proverbs 22. Because we got book to read. Proverbs 22, verse 15. Proverbs 22, verse 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. That was foolish for my daughter to tell my other daughter, get on top of the, get, put the chair up there, go up there, and get the cookies, and then come back and we can eat the cookies, and they'll never know. I know that's what came out of her mouth. But when I came home, saw the chair, oh, somebody got to put the chair back. Maybe I would have never figured out about the cookies. But foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from them. And that rod of correction came down on both of them, but it came down more on my oldest daughter. But that's the same thing that happens with the Lord. When we're acting foolish as a child, what does the Lord do? The rod of correction shall drive it far from him. And some people just know never learn. They continue <laughs> to be foolish as a child. Let's go to Jeremiah 17. Now remember, it said the foolish foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Let's go to Jeremiah 17. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. It's also... In the heart of men, according to Genesis, evil and wicked imaginations, right? His thoughts are, con are evil continuously in Genesis. Let's go to Jeremiah 17, read verses 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Our heart can get us in so much trouble. Now, I ain't talking about the heart here. I'm talking about the heart here. What's in our heart can get us in trouble, especially once it comes out of your mouth. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. 
I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Your heart, let's go to Matthew 15. Your heart can get you in trouble. What's in your heart? You want to do it? You can do it, be in trouble. You can say it, really get in trouble. Matthew 15. Matthew 15, we're going to read one verse. And that's verse 11. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but which come out, cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Oh, so the heart is wicked. It's in our heart. But what's coming out of our heart through our mouth defiles us. And we ain't paying that attention. We're not paying attention to that. We done went around and said stuff about other people. And then when it comes back, we trying to figure out, well, hey, I, hey, I didn't. Some people lie. I ain't say nothing. I ain't say that. it's coming back to defile you. These are some things that we need to be knowledgeable knowledgeable about sometimes the best thing is to just be quiet but no it's in our heart we want this other person to get in trouble we can't hold in the business that somebody else told me i got to tell somebody else where was that matthew 15 so the heart every so the heart is wicked Everything coming out the mouth deceiveth the man. Anybody watched my video I did about my marriage? You know, I confessed that when I reunited with my ex-wife, she was already married. And I'm on the phone talking to her because we ever connected through Facebook. And my heart still loved her. But my heart being desperately wicked, I told her that. She's married to another man. And I told her, I still love you. I never stopped loving you. And it was downhill ever since, man. <laughs> it was great. Then it went to a peak and all of a sudden, whew, just straight hit the ground. Lord, let me go through that because of my wicked heart and my defiled mouth, which defiled me. And I got those videos up. You can go watch it. They're called Unequally Yoked, the mistake, my mistake that you don't want to make. And I hope it helps somebody. Proverbs 6. The things that come out of our mouth, which is coming from our heart, makes it makes us defile. Well, let's see some of the things that come out of people's mouths. Proverbs 6. That the Lord does not like. <laughs> the Lord don't like it. So let's see some of the things that come out of the mouth that the Lord hates. Let me put it that way. Proverbs 6 verse 12. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a forward mouth. Corrupt mouth. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. He teacheth with his fingers. Forwardness is in his heart. Corruptness is in his heart. It's all about corruption with, with this person. He devises mischief continually. He soweth discord. He loved to see people fight. Haven't we seen this in high school? Somebody going around, yeah, you know, such and such is angry with such and such. And they go in what we call instigate to get these people to fight. And these days now they just making up lies to get people to fight just so they can be like world star, world star. They, and it's, it's, it's a sin. Let's keep reading. Therefore, shall his iniquity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Six things doth the Lord hate. Yeah, seven are an abomination unto him. These six things we're about to read, the seven things, the Lord hates it. A proud look, a lying tongue, 
and hands that shed innocent blood. And heart that devised that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift to running into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. These are the things that the Lord hates. Tale bearers, tattletales, busybodies. He hates this. And a lot of people don't even, they, they just let this slide on by. People that love mischief and discord. People that love to talk about other people all the time. I be having, sometimes I got to excuse myself from people like that. It's like everything that comes out of their mouth, they're talking about somebody else. Whether it's the clothes they got on. Whether it doesn't matter what it is, they constantly. I can see sometimes you say something about a person, but if it's like every person you see, or you're constantly talking about that person, I got to watch you now. What are you saying about me when I'm not around you? We went to 19. Let's go to 1 Timothy 6. This is why, as servants of God, we also got to watch. These type of people, we got to watch and make sure that we're not doing it. And then we got to watch those type of people that are because they're trying to they're trying to get you to continue with them. They want to keep talking about people. And they want you to do it with them because then it justifies them doing it. And we already know the Lord don't like people who are. Oh, what is it? Praise the wicked. He don't like it. And some of us will continue to keep doing it just because we want to be friends with that person. Because we're trying to get our boss or somebody, a pastor, an elder, anybody to like us. First Timothy 6. Let's go to First Timothy 6. First Timothy six, we're going to start reading at verse one. Let as many servants that are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all of all honor. That the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them. Because they are brethren. But rather do them service because they are the they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing but dotting about questions and strifes of words whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil sermonsings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and dis destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. See, remember when I was talking earlier about the Christian and urban apologists? Man, don't be going into battles with them. They're, they're provoking you to say stuff, to be in there. So they can turn around and say, see, I told you the Misra all the Israelites are like that. Same thing with Israelite uh, antagonists. Right now, I'm speaking to the people that are balanced. You got to watch both sides. Brothers that say that they Israel and people that say they not. You got to watch both sides. Satan working both sides of the fence. But the thing is, the Lord does not like anyone who's bringing up foolish questions that I see a lot on social media. And some of the groups that I'm in, some people just do it just to see everybody go at it. I ain't going to lie. 
I was guilty of it when I first got into the truth. I would put up a question and I would wait for somebody to go against it. And then I'm like, blam, I got you now. You know, this is the part of being a child. I was a child. Now that I'm a man, I don't do that anymore. Yes, this walk requires growing. It requires it. A lot of times we, some people don't grow. They stay right there where they at. Could be in the world 20 something years and they still where they at. They may have a, not a, a lot of knowledge, but as they still got a, the child's mind, they ain't applying it. And that's a shame. Perverse disputings of men with corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. What was the other one? Causing envy and strife and railings and e man, listen, that's sowing discord among brethren. Just to get a, just to see, and then like with me on social media, somebody asked me a question or if I'm getting into it, when I get to the third, at least the third comment that I have to make, I'm done after that. If you don't get it, you don't, I plan to see, maybe you'll get it later. But if you don't get it, you're not. Because the one thing that stopped me, I want to give this to everybody. All right. Even the young people in the world. The one thing that stopped me from doing that was the book. When Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, that's when I stopped arguing with folks. That's when I stopped debating and, and arguing with people. He said, my sheep hear my voice. He was talking, remember he was talking to the Pharisees. He said, you don't understand me because you, oh, well, we getting into that? Yeah, we are. You don't understand me because you are of your father. He, they were not of his sheep. So they're never going to hear what the Lord say. We're speaking what the Lord say, but they're never going to hear it. And maybe they will. Maybe you planted, planted seed and maybe they'll get it on. They'll get it like years later. But I'm not about to go back and forth and make you believe it. That's what stopped me from all of that foolishness. Because I was a child and I read something that made me get and become a man. How far down did we go? Let's let's keep reading. But godliness is with contentment is great gain. Oh, let's start at verse five, five again. Perverse disputings of men, corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. But I mean, for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we carry nothing out and having Food and raiment, let us be wherewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and to many foolish and hurtful lusts, and drown men in destruction and perdition. It's a trap. It is a trap. This is why, as servants of God, we got to keep our eyes and ears on all the time with everyone that surround us and then we got to check ourselves and make sure that we ain't the tail bearer or the busybody or a tattletale we got to make sure that we ain't talking about somebody who don't deserve it and we're gonna get down to what christ said to do because i know some people are like yeah but you know we going to get to it. Trust me. All right. Let's go back to Proverbs now. These are those were the things that Paul said. Why? Because he knew the book. This wasn't something that Paul just came up with for my Christian and urban antagonist. He didn't come up with this. Everything Paul and the Gospels and the epistles, all of that quoted the, the, the Old Testament. This is why you got to teach from where the law and the testimony. Because if you don't, there's no light in you. Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. Again, thank you for everybody that's uh, on Periscope, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Yes, I'm live on YouTube again. Um, please share, like the video, put it in some groups, start a watch party. This is something that definitely needs to get out, especially to the children of God. It needs to get out to the world, 
but the children of God needs this so we can stop falling back into the world. Proverbs 26, verse 17. Proverbs 26, verse 17. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. A person that's passing by and there's strife going on and now they want to get into it. See, there, there's that rejoicing in iniquity again. You want to get into it. You want to take sides. And whoever you think is on the loser side, you're going to team with the winning side and talk about it because you want to look good. He that passes by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him, getting in other people's business. This fight has nothing to do with you, but you got you just got to get into it. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you're trying to do something in peace, I see nothing wrong with that. If I see two brothers, and I've seen, I've done this before. I've seen two brothers going at it, or on, mainly on Facebook. I've gotten with, I, hey, let's let's work this out, man. God, what did Christ say? Blessed are the peacemakers. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But if you jumping in the fight so you can stay on one side and talk about the other, he that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh the dog by the ears. That dog going to bite you. As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor, saying, <laughs> am I not in sport? Am I not joking? Oh, yeah. You get some people who love to joke and talk about other people. We, I said that earlier. If they're joking in a manner, talking about other people in a joking manner, they're doing it to you, too, when you're not around. And sometimes they'll do it to you in front of other people to make themselves look good. Some people got to be the center of attention. They have to be. They feel out of place if they're not the center of attention. And if it calls for talking about another person to make the crowd like them, that's what this is. Am I not? I'm just joking with you, bro. Why are you getting a man? Uh, well, yeah, I can say it because it's, 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 it's been said on TV. Man, I'm just busting your balls, man. I'm busting your balls. Quit, quit, quit crying. Quit crying. You, I'm just joking, man. No, no. You what what did it say? A tailbearer's words is like wounds. You're wounding this person. You're wounding this person to look good to the, everybody else. How do you know this isn't really hurting his feelings? If it's hurting his or her feelings and they're telling you stop. Why would you keep doing it? Because someone's a busybody. Someone has to be the center of attention. And that's a shame. If your brother or your sister is telling you, man, stop doing that. Man, chill. And you want to throw it off as a joke. Am I not in sport? And you're joking. Where no wood is, verse 20, where no wood is, there the, there the fire goeth out. So, where the where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. So if you have a fire, again, what did he say earlier? Uh, he that passes by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him. So let's skip down to verse 20 now. Where there is no wood, there is the fire to go out. So if there's a fire going on, if there's a fight going on, and there ain't no more wood, that fire, that fight is going to go out. Right. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceases. So if these people got a little argument and they working it out and the tail bearer ain't coming in saying, yeah, but you know, he said this about you. Or, yeah, you know, he said she said that about you. You stirring up that fire again. Right. Now, let's keep reading. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire. So is the contentious man to kindle strife. This 
brother or this sister loves to see wickedness. They love to see contention. They love to see strife. And just like coals, the throwing coals, the throwing wood on that fire to keep it going. They're not trying to be peaceful and bring two sisters or two brothers or a brother and sister back together as family. They're not doing that. And that's a problem. That's a major problem. Burning lips, verse, I'm sorry, verse 22. The words of a talebearer are as wounds. There it is again. And they go down into the uttermost parts of the belly. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like pot shard covered with silver dross. He that hateth disassembleth with his lips and layeth up deceit within him. He that hateth, your brother hates you, he gonna start talking about you. And uh, most of the time he gonna do it behind your back. So why? He hateth, disassembleth with his lips. He's trying to break you down. She's trying to break you down with her lips instead of speaking life to lift you up. And layeth his deceit within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not. See, a lot of times now when people tell, start telling me stuff about other people, like I said, I listen. I'm like, okay. But I'm the type of person, and people that know me personally know, I'm not going to judge that person based off of, I'm not going to judge that person based off of what someone else has told me. The only thing I'll do, let me cut this back off. The only thing that I will do is I may take heed, but I got to know that person first before I make a complete judgment of that person. That's how I am. That's how we all should be. There's nothing wrong with hearing about a warning about a person. But if a person going on and on and on and on and on and on, hey, okay, what, what, what's, what, what's the problem you got? Where did I leave off at? 25? When Okay, 25. When he speaketh fair, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart. See, the Lord tries the heart. He tries the reins. He's the one that knows what's going on. And he told who? He told King Solomon. And King Solomon, being the wisest man, experienced, most likely experienced all this stuff that he wrote down. Verse 26, whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be shown before the whole congregation. Who's di whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. Woo! Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. I used to, now before I got into the word, there's a girlfriend that I used to live with. We lived together. Before I got into the word, people, we lived together. She had a daughter. I raised a daughter about a good four years, four or five years. And she used to talk about the daughter's father in front of the daughter. He ain't this. He ain't that. Blah, blah, blah. And she had a legit reason to say this stuff, but not to the child. Because the father was only calling for Christmas and a birthday. You don't want to dig a pit. Like I told her, and I start telling a lot of other single parent females. Don't dig a pit for the father because you may fall in it yourself. Whoso diggeth the pit shall fall therein. This is before I got into the word. Don't be trying to bury him in front of to your daughter because you might be doing it to yourself. You just might be doing it to yourself, which hurts the daughter or the son in the same at the same time let the children see how their parents are and make up their own decision whoso diggeth the pit shall fall therein and he that rolleth the stone it will return upon him 
you create creating all this stuff one day all that stuff gonna come back on you and tail bearers and tattletales and busybodies don't see that they're trying to get positions they're trying to get in good standing it's called brown nosing and we're gonna get into that a little bit later verse 28 a lying tongue hated those that are afflicted by it let me read that one more time a lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. We just gonna mosey on down. I, that's self-explanatory. Let's just mosey on down to Proverbs 11. We're gonna get all this wisdom in first before we start talking about a couple of tattle tales some tales of tattling proverbs 11 i said proverbs 11 we're gonna start reading it verse 9 and hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor again death and life or in the power of the tongue a hypocrite, a hypocrite, a hypocrite mouth, a hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. You get somebody killed with your mouth by saying the wrong thing. You really can. And it'll be laid on you, too. Besides the one who probably did the murdering, it'll be laid on you. I didn't kill him. Yeah, but you said some stuff that provoked this dude to kill him. Instead of trying to be a peaceful brother or sisters, be like, man, that ain't nothing, man. Just let that go. Let that go. But no, no, man, that brother is wicked. Blah, blah, this and the other. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what's going on in the mind of the other wicked person's heart. They may want to sit up there and kill a person. A hypocrite with his mouth destroy his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. That's the peaceful brother trying to stop something before it happens. Skip down to verse 12. He that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. So a talebearer, if they're busy telling you all the time, everybody else's business believe they're telling yours too because that's what's in their heart in their heart is to go around and tell somebody yeah you know such and such did this and blah 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 and i don't, and then and then sister this did that and such and blah 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 and woo 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 hey that's a chicago thing woo 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 and all of that other stuff and in my mind i'm sitting up here what are you telling them about me that's why I'm a lot of my business because some people i'm like i don't know if i need to tell you i really got to know you good to tell you something about me but when i'm on on the video i have no problem telling my sins because i had a problem with some some brothers did not like the fact that i talked about my marriage but i'm like no nah, that could help other people to not go through what i go through praise the lord confess your sins of one another right Let's go to Proverbs 20. Let's get a little bit more wisdom. Proverbs 20. And we're going to read one verse. He, uh, verse 19. He that goeth about as a talebearer reveal of secrets. Again, you can't tell all your business to everybody. You can't. And I wish I would have put this in the... If my brother Mikael is watching or anybody else, <laughs> I hope I ain't starting nothing. The Lord, the Lord said, brothers, you can't even tell your wife everything. Anybody that knows where that is, put it up for me so I can put it in this lesson. This is why you can't tell everybody everything if you can't even tell your wife everything you better be careful what you tell everybody else straight up he that goeth about as a talebearer reveal of secrets 
Therefore, meddle not with him that flattering with his him that flattereth with his lips. This talebearer is flattering you. He's trying to become your friend. Why? So he can get to know your secrets, then go out and tell everybody else. Let's read this again. He that go out as a talebearer reveal of secrets. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. He's trying to become good. He's trying to become, yeah, thank you, Mikael. Look, yeah, post it up when you find it. But he's trying to look good to you so you can start confessing your faults. Then he can go out and tell Bear, continue to do his job. She doing the same thing. Girl, this girl, girl, we should hang out. We should do this. And then why are they doing it? Because remember, we're going to get into it. We, I, I don't want to give them a lesson away too much. But they're doing it under another spirit. And they're doing this because they want to find out all your faults so they can go out, tell everybody else your faults, and make themselves look good. I'm glad I'm not like that. Proverbs 16. Let's go to Proverbs 16. Oh, I wish I'd have put that in here now. Because <laughs> if the Lord telling us, I'll wait to if my brother put it up, if he find it to put it up. Proverbs 16. We're going to start reading it verse. Let's, you know what? I started in verse 27, but now let me read verse 18. Proverbs 16. In verse 18, pride goeth before destruction mm. and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Okay, I saw, I saw ah, no, hold on. Okay. So it's better. So now we're going to read this Proverbs. Then we're going to go to Micah 7 and 5. Micah 7 and 5. Okay. So let's finish this Proverbs. Let's go to verse 27 now. It's best to have a humble spirit. Period. Proverbs 16, verse 27. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and his lips there is of a burn as a burning fire that's why this person is around you flattering with your lips because they're trying to dig up all the evil stuff that you've done <clears throat> they're trying to observe and see if there's any evil things that you do so they can go out and be a tail bearer a tattletale and a busybody and tell everybody else a forward man soweth strife and a whisper is separated Chief friends, whoo! You mean there's two people that are friends, and and this person wants to separate them as friends. They also do that with marriages. They also do that with marriages. Some people can be jealous of a marriage, and they start going to one person, then they go to the other one and separate them. An ungodly man diggeth up evil in his lip. Oh, I was already there. Forward man so is strife, and a whisper separated the chief friends. A violent man entice his neighbor and leadeth him into the way that is not good. What was that movie again? Juice. Juice is the prime example of this. The, 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 the major part of that movie was what? Dude trying to get the, everybody, let's go rob this liquor store, right? A violent man entices his neighbor and lead him into the way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise forward things. Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. Come on, man. Let's go get, let's hit the stove up. We know when the police go by, we know they routine and all that stuff. We can hit this dude up. Yeah, but you know, he got a shoddy in the back. Yeah, but if we can get to him before he get to that shoddy, we can get them. It's just evil. We're rejoicing in evil. 
rejoicing in evil just so we can get paid. Now let's go to that Micah. Let's go to that Micah. Right, because we're getting ready. Oh, <laughs> let's go to that Micah. Micah 7. Thank you, sister. I didn't see who it was, whoever that sister was, because I think Mikael said the sister put it up. But whoever put it up, thank you. Now, Micah is one of the little bitty books. I ain't going to say the minor prophets like people say. They're not minor. There's a lot of things in these little books that speak a lot. <laughs> and again, this is one of them. Micah 7 and 5. Micah 7 and 5. Trust ye not a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Ooh, so the Lord just, oh man, we got to be careful what we tell our spouse. Matter of fact, let's keep reading verse six. For the son dishonored the father. So now we talk about family members. Oh, man. Praise the Lord, man. Hallelujah. Even family members, we got to watch sometimes. I used to say this back in the day again before I got to the, into the word. You know that saying that says, blood, let's finish reading. No, let me say this. You know that saying that says blood is thicker than water? I used to tell people, yeah, but it's harder to tread in blood than it is in water. Y'all get that? Blood is thicker than water, but when you're treading in water, it's easy. Blood is almost like mud. You can drown quicker in blood than you can in water. For the son dishonoreth the father. The daughter rises up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemy are the men of his own house. You got to be careful being a tailbearer there too. I already gave the example of children. Sibling rivalry going at each other trying to impress mom and pops. Thank you so much, sister. Thank you, Lord, for reminding me of that. So I'm glad I got it in here now. Now, speaking of family, this goes right into it. Let's get into a tale of tale bearing. Let's go to Numbers because yesterday I wrote down Exodus. Let's go to Numbers 12. Family. Fits right, this fit right in there. Praise the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Numbers 12. We going to talk about family and civil rivalry. Ain't that something? Oh, Lord have mercy. Numbers 12, verse 1. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses. That's their brother. They spoke against Moses, man. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just amazing that they came to me and then, and then y'all came up with it right on time to go into this. It's like the perfect segue, that Micah. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Egyptian woman whom we have married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. They was jealous. They like, Let's see what she said. And they said, I'm sorry, have the Lord indeed Spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Family members tripping on who's in charge. Yeah, that's little brother. I remember when I found when when mama had to get rid of you, and then I followed and found out where you was at, and then I had you come. I didn't have you, but I when, when came back, told mama and them. They came and got you. You was back with us again, you know, and then he had to go away. We're family. Has the Lord indeed only spoken by Moses? Have he not spoken by us? And the Lord heard it. Now, the man Moses was very meek. Humble spirit. He was very meek above all men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and the Aaron and to the Miriam, come out ye three under, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. 
And the Lord came down in the pillar of a cloud and stood at the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. See, Pop's coming down now. I heard y'all what you said. And I don't like it at all. Parents, I don't know about y'all. I can't stand when my children always fight. I want to see them come together in unity. But once they get, to, and they do. Oh, man. Don't let my son get silly. And then my daughter join in with him. Now I'm like, oh, my goodness. But in my heart, I'm like, thank you, Lord. But I hate when they fight. It's the same thing the Lord is saying. My servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all my house? With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall be shall be behold. Wherefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Were you not afraid to speak against him? And you're doing this because he married someone outside of Israel? Another black person who's not in the congregation of Israel, but actually left because she saw the wonderful works of God. Said, let your God be our God. She didn't say that in the book. But the actions speak louder than words, right? That mixed multitude knew about all the mother gods and they left. She was amongst the mixed multitude and he married him and God didn't have a problem with it. But the, but the brother and the sister did. Verse nine, and the anger of the Mo and the anger of the Moses <laughs> and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he departed. And the cloud departed off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. The Lord was upset about it. He was like, I'm about to, somebody got to get punished for this. Somebody got to get punished for this. Tail bearer, busybody, tattletale. And Aaron looked upon Miriam and behold, she was leprous and she was leprous. And, and that's all we go into today. That's the tale because I'm quite sure it was Miriam for the Lord to punish Miriam only. Miriam had to be the one that went and whispering over in Aaron's ear. Ain't the Lord talking? The Lord talked to us too. Yeah, you're right. The Lord did talk to us too. And she got punished for it. We already know. I don't need to read what happened. But she turned white as snow. She had to go out to camp. What is it, seven days? Yeah, be ashamed. Matter of fact, let's keep reading. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not this sin upon us. Aaron is speaking to Moses. Because he's supposed to be the high priest. Now Moses being the intercessor. <laughs> I beseech thee, lay not this sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly. Oh, as a child, they did foolishly? Mm, mm, mm. And wherein we have sinned, let her not be as one of the dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord. So now the high priest went to the intercessor, the intercessor is crying unto the Lord now, saying, heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, if her father has spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Woo. I can't imagine being that angry that I was spitting my daughter's faces. I can't imagine that. So that means the Lord was upset. This may seem little to some people. Oh, he was just, she was just talking about, but the Lord was upset. 
Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that, let her be received again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not until and the people journeyed not until Miriam was brought in again. That her what the Lord did to her was equivalent to a father spitting in his daughter's face for being <laughs> disobedient for talking about somebody else. That's how mad the Lord was. Now let's go to now that that's sibling rivalry. That's tail bear. That's talking about somebody and getting somebody else in. It's foolishness. They said it was fool. What well, is foolishness? Acting like a child, right? Let's go to Second Samuel. Yeah, let's go to this second Samuel. Let's read another tale. Second Samuel, and we're going to start at verse one. And Y'all stay with me on this one, especially the tail bearers that like to go run to their boss and tell on, tell what another co-worker doing or people that like to run to the pastor or the elders and tell what someone else has done. Y'all better, let's, hey, stay with me on this. Let's start at verse 1, 2 Samuel 1. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had abode two days in Ziklag, it came even to the pass on the third day that, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes rent the earth upon his head and so and so it was he came to david and fell to the earth and did um, <laughs> obeisance all right <laughs> i'm sorry y'all i ain't really good with words so pronunciation but he came with humility all right and david said unto him from whence thou come comest thou and he said unto him out of the camp of israel I am escaped. And David said unto him, how went the matter? I pray thee, tell me. And he answered that the people are fled from the battle. And many of the people also are fallen and dead. And Saul and Jonathan, his sons, are dead also. And David said unto the young man that told him, how knowest that thou, Saul and Jonathan, and his son be dead. And the young man, the young man that told him said, as I happened by chance upon Mount Gilboa, behold, Saul leaned on his spear and lo, his chariots and his horsemen followed hard after him. And when he had looked behind him, he saw me and called me and I answered, here am I. And he said unto me, who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. And he said unto me again, stand, I pray thee upon me and slay me for anguish is come upon me because of my life is because my life is yet whole in me. Verse 10. Now, let's let's look at verse 10 real Real closely. So I stood upon him and slew him because I was sure that he could not live after that he was fallen. And I took the crown that was upon his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and have brought him hither unto thy Lord, unto my Lord. Now, let's go read what really happened. Go back a page, go back a chapter to 1 Samuel 31. Let's read what really happened. Now the Philistines fought against Israel and, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons and the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab and Melchushua, Saul's sons. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him. And he was sore wounded 
of the arches, but he was not dead yet. See, he was hit by the archers fleeing. Let's see what happened after that. Then Saul turned to his turn unto his armor bearer. Draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith. Lest these uncircumcised, these were the heathens, the Philistines following them. Lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not. For he was sore afraid. Remember, this man came from the camp of Israel. Let's read, let's finish reading it. And read it one more time. For he was sore afraid. But the armor bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Therefore, Saul took a sword and fell upon it. Saul killed himself. Verse 5. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword and died with him. <coughs> so in 1 Samuel, King Saul was hit. He was wounded. He knew he was going to die and be abused. So instead of letting the Philistines do it, he turned to his armor bearer. Take your sword and kill me. But the armor bearer, being Israel, was afraid to do that for a reason. So Saul killed himself, and then the armor bearer killed himself. Now let's go back to 2 Samuel and start at verse 10 again. So I stood up upon him and slew him. The dude lied. Isn't this what tail bearers do? Whatever the storyline is, they got to add a little something to make themselves look good. So I stood upon him and slew him because I was sure that he could not live. After that, he had fallen. And I took the crown that was upon his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and have brought them hither unto my Lord. Then David took hold of his, clo and his clothes and rent them. And likewise, all the men that were with him <coughs> and they mourned and wept and fasted until even for Saul, for Jonathan, his son, and for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel because they were fallen by the sword. So David and everybody with him, they rent their clothes and they fasted because they were mourning and they was upset that their brothers, remember King David and King Saul was going at each other at this time, but they were still their brothers. And they felt bad about that they died. Verse 13. And David said unto the young man that told him, whence art, whence art thou? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger and a Malachite. Now remember this whole thing still. Where did this stranger, the Amalekite, who was not Israel, come from? The camp of Israel. Yes, brothers and sisters. When we went to war, not only with each other, other nations came with us too. Individually, remember Uriah the Hittite fought for David. He wasn't in Israel. This dude came out of the camp. So he knew the, what the armor bearer knew. And now David about to get on him for what he, what he claimed he did. Verse 14. And David said unto him, how was thou not afraid to stretch the, forth thy hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? <clears throat> you in the camp and you know everybody will not put their hands on that king because he was the Lord's anointed. That's why the armor bearer didn't do it. And then he killed himself. But this dude lied and said, I killed him. Verse 15. And David called. <laughs> one of the young men and said go near and fall upon him and he smote him that he died and David said unto him thy blood be upon thy head for thy mouth hath testified against thee saying I have slain the Lord's anointed uh. Uh, uh. 
So you mean to tell me that tattletales and tail bearers and busybodies, they can actually get themselves killed? Yes, they can. Especially if they spin in lies, because what does this last verse say? For thy mouth hath testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anoint. The brother lied, trying to brown nose, trying to brown nose King David. And a lot of people do that in organizations. I don't care what the organization is. If it's your job, if someone's doing something wrong and, and, and you run into your boss, yeah, blah, 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 blah. If someone did a job, oh, here's the biggest thing. Here's the biggest thing. In corporate America, it yeah, it, it happens there too. But in corporate America, someone says, hey, man, blah, blah, blah. I heard you got a good idea, you know. Don't take it directly to the boss. Give it to me and I'll take it to him. And they do that and then they go and they show it to the boss. The boss likes it and the person lies and said, I came up with this. Now they ain't good with the boss. Same thing happens in the church. Same thing happens at the camps. It ain't no different nowhere. The same thing happens. There's people in power that will run to the pastor, run to the other elders and say, I, this was my idea when it was someone else's. Oh, yeah, people, there's tail bearers in the churches, too. There are tail bearers in the church. Brown nosing, trying to look good to the pastor, to the elders, to whoever's in charge so they can get in another good position. Why they tore somebody else down. Yes, busybodies, tail bearers, <laughs> somebody said rats. Yes. Don't think just because you go to a certain camp, everything is peachy king. It happens in your job. It happens in an organization at camp or at church. It's going to happen in any organization. People are always trying to put other people down, even amongst your friends. You got a group of friends. Let's say there's an alpha male against your, in your friends, and you want to be cool with him. You start talking about somebody else. Lord ain't happy with none of that. He ain't happy with none of that. Brown nosing. And for those that don't know what brown nosing is, you got your face up in somebody's booty so bad that there's stains on your face now. And it happens everywhere. Everywhere. Let's go to Matthew 26. We can read this today. This dude brown knows so much that he lied. He had to throw a little bit more on it to make himself look good, but forgot. You weren't supposed to kid. Nobody's supposed to put their hands on the king, on the Lord's anointed. And what did he do? He lied and he died. Beware, brothers, that do that. When you run to your boss, you better hope that they don't find out that you lied or did whatever and you get fired. Same thing in the church. Same thing in the camps. Be careful how you treat other people just so you can move up. Because if the pastor or the elders find out, you could be fired as well. That's my warning through the Lord to everybody. Same thing happens in gang situations. You lying on somebody. What if they decide they want to take you out because you lied about something? Ooh, let's get back to this lesson. Matthew 26. Yeah, tattle tales. Tattle tales. Matthew 26. Let's read about Jesus picked somebody like this. He picked somebody to be this because prophecy had to be fulfilled. So Jesus knew the hearts of men, right? That's that's what the book said we read earlier. He tried to reign. He know the hearts of men. 
So he purposely picked Judas. Matthew 26, verse 1. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of, am I reading the right? Yeah, yeah. The feast of Passover. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. So he told them this. He said, I'm going to die. This is what Jesus has told them. Then assembled together the chief priests. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then assembled the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people and unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtility and kill him. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproaring among the people. Now, I know why I got a little confused. Verse one and two is Jesus telling the disciples that I'm going to die. Why? Because he already knew what was going on in the next verse. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people in the palace of the high priest and was called Caiaphas and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtility and kill him. This stuff was going to go on. But the thing is, how were they going to get Jesus? But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be any uproar among the people. Let's skip down to verse 14. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest. Because, because Jesus knew what was in this dude's heart. That's why he picked him. He knew this cat was a talebearer. Verse 15. And said unto them, what will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they con they co covenanted it with him. They made an agreement with him. For 30 pieces of silver. Dude wanted money. And he was willing to do anything to get it. Amongst the high priests. Right? Who wanted to kill Jesus. So the Lord used Judas to be the middleman because he knew this dude is going, it's prophesied, 30 pieces of silver. Let's go down to verse 47. And yet while he spake low to Judas, this is after he done had the Passover. This is after Christ had the Passover. Then he went to the garden of Gethsemane, prayed three times, crying to the Lord, do I have to do this? But if you want me to do this, it's your will, Lord. This is what the Lord said when you read the, the begin the rest of the chapter of 26. But at 47, while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him with a great multitude of swords and stabs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. And now he that betrayed him gave him a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss. That same is he. Hold him fast. So now he's giving the Pharisees a sign of who Christ is. Woo, he's tattletailing. He's tail bearing. He's a busybody. He's greedy. He's a lion. All to getting good with the Pharisees and to get paid for it. A position. To get paid and get a position. Verse 49. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And what did Jesus say? And Jesus said unto him, Friend. He called him friend. Do y'all understand that? Sometimes the tail bearer is your friend. I ain't always going to say your best friend. You can weed out who's your best friend. But your friends around you, you got to watch them too. Jesus called this. Jesus knew what this dude was going to do. He knew that he was going to get paid 30 pieces of silver to turn him in. And he still called him friend. Wherefore art thou come? Then came they 
and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Then they took him. His friend turned him in. Let's go in, the ver in Matthew 27. We're going to start reading in verse 1. He called him friend. You rode with me for three and a half years. And you did this to me. Matthew 27, verse 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they when they bound him, they led him away and delivered him unto Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas which was, had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest elders. But so what did Judas do? He realized his wrong. He realized I shouldn't have done this. But his heart, mm, 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 his heart was full of greed. His heart wanted that money. His heart wanted to be cool with the chief priests and the Pharisees. And he now realized he did wrong. And he repented. And again, he brought the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned. I have sinned in that I have betrayed the, the innocent blood. And they said, what is, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. He realized he, he I'm not going to say he realized he killed the Messiah. But ah, Jesus called him friend, man, that had to be a dagger. It had to be. It had to be such of a dagger. That it, it just made him realize, what have I done? I done did all of this. I'm in front of him. I done gave him a kiss. And this dude still called me friend. This dude went, took the money back, cast it on the floor, and went and killed himself. Beware of you being a tailbearer, a tattler. Because you know why he killed himself? Because he was he didn't want to be shamed. All the disciples saw this. Where was he going to go now? He didn't want to be shamed. And he hung himself, man. That's for y'all terror bearers, bearers that like to tell tales. That like you, you can be so shameful. I don't, I don't wish death on nobody. Let me get that clear now. But you don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. You also don't want to be going and tail bearing to whoever. And then they do something to you. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Let's go to first Psalms. I'm sorry, Psalms 1. Psalms 1, verse 1. We're going to read one verse. Now nah, we we'll probably read a little bit more. Let's keep, let's read verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. The Pharisees was the ungodly. And what, <laughs> what did Judas do? He was walking in their, in their counsel because he wanted to get some money. Not standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. That's what the Pharisees was. And a lot of people are still the same way today. I try my best not to sit in the seat of the scornful. Those that love to talk about other people all the time to make themselves look good. Because I don't want to get caught up in doing it with you. And now that's written down on me. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful or the counsel of the ungodly. Let's go to St. John 8. Who's the counsel of the ungodly? Let's see who Jesus said they were. I know this video long. <laughs> well, I did start a half an hour late, so I'm what, an hour and a half in? Okay. 
St. John 8. Let's go read about the, 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 the sinful counsel of the ungodly, the scornful. St. John 8. The Lord is wonderful, man. He gave us all these words for us to correct ourselves from the rest of this world. And people don't want to read it. They want to stay in this world. And even within Israel, people saying that they love the Lord, but man, we're going to get to that too. St. John 8, verse 30. Now, right here, Jesus is talking to the Jews. Let's read. As he spake these words, St. John 8 and 30, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Now, let's, now the context is, he's talking to the Jews, right? Let's see what they say, and let's what he calls them now. Skip down to verse 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, if Abraham was your children, ye, I mean, if you were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard from God, heard of God, and did not Abraham? Ye do the deeds of your father. Oh, because he, he knew the hearts of men. Then said they unto him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would have loved me. But I, pro I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he that sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? even because ye cannot hear my word, because these Jews were not of his flock. Remember, he said, y'all don't hear me. You don't hear me, though. I'm speaking, but you don't hear me, though, because they are not of his sheep. Who are they? Verse 44, ye are of your father, the devil. And the, the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. These people were the children of Satan. Because they weren't doing what Christ said. If you're not doing what Christ said, then you're doing, you, you covered under somebody. You either covered under Christ and if you come from under the cover of Christ, you you under Satan. Ye are your ye are your father, the devil. The counsel of the ungodly, the seat of scorners, the talebearers, the busybodies, the tattletales, the liars. That's who these people are. Self check. Make sure you're not the same person, beloved. This is what Christ called them, right? Why did Christ call them that? Because they're doing the work of Satan. And no, this ain't the synagogue of Satan. As we go into Revelation 9 and Revelation 2 and 9 and 3 and 9. This is Israel. This is totally Israel. Revelation 12, they do the work of Satan and they want to kill him. Even though the Lord was telling them all this truth, he knew from prophecy, from he prophesied it <clears throat> through the through the uh through the prophets, he's gonna kill him anyway. But he had to die. We know that he had to die. But it's a shame he used us to do it. People want to say all oh, the Romans killed him. No, they didn't convict him. We did. I am Israel, and I blame me. Let's go to Revela Revelation 12. Year of your father, right? He was alive from the beginning. Let's go to the beginning at the end of the book. Revelation 12, verse 3. We're going to walk you through 
the father of lies now. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great dragon, great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. His tail with his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to ready to be delivered for it to devour her child as soon as it was born. Who's the, the great red dragon having seven heads and, and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head? Who is the one that withdrew one third of the angels from heaven and had them cast down to the earth? Let's continue to read. Let's skip down to verse seven. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast down. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. So the great red dragon is Satan himself. The war was going on. It's Lucifer, same person, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out of the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So he was cast down to this earth. And the angels was cast down with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation. In heaven salvation? Whoa, wait a minute. How did they get salvation in heaven? And strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser. See, this is another title. We know Lucifer's title is Satan, that old serpent the devil, but it's also the accuser. Isn't that what tail bearers and busybodies and tattletales do? They accuse you. They accuse you. Now we see where all this is coming from, right? This is why Christ said, you have your father, the devil. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. Let's understand something. The angels got salvation, too. Remember the ones that can, they fought against Satan and his angels and whoever was losing was going to go into the lake of fire when that comes. That's death. So they received salvation. They got to remain and stay who God created them to do through Christ. And they overcame the lamb. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word testimony, and they loved not their lives on the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens. They rejoiced up there when this happened. And ye that dwelled in him. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So now, Satan and his angels, they were cast out. The, an the angels in heaven are rejoicing, because they're not going to see that second death. Well, to us it would be the second death, but to them it's going to be the first death. But now those angels then came to this to this earth with Satan and they mad. And they causing havoc. I'm about to say it like my pastor. <laughs> havoc. I'm going to say havoc. All right. But that's that's what happened there. Then they came here. But he's called the accuser. He is called the accuser. Let's go. To Matthew 13. He's called the accuser. We don't have to really go. You know what? Now, let, you could go to Genesis 3 on your own. I read it so much that I don't need to read it now. But you can go and see when he came. He started lying. All right. I can't do it. Go to Matt. Go to Genesis 3. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but let's go to Genesis 3. I got to read it. I got to read it. I can't just tell you, but I got to read it. Let's go to Genesis 3. He's the accuser, right? 
Okay. He's a tattletale, right? <laughs> okay. Let's go to Genesis 3 and read. And the serpent, that's the title again, it's more craft, more subtle or crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yeah, if God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Remember, Eve was by herself. For those people that say that Adam and Eve was together, no, they, she was by herself. And what did Satan do? He slipped up in her ear like a tail bearer does. He slipped up in the air because he was a busybody. He ain't had nothing to do now. There's only two people on the planet. I don't know if I should go to the man, but I know that the woman is the weaker vessel. How does he know this? Because he got the knowledge of good and evil. He knows the Lord didn't hold nothing back from Satan. That's in the book, too. So like a tail bearer, like a busybody, like a tattletale, well, not like a tattletale, he's going to go. He went right on on up to Eve. Yeah, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, the woman told the truth, and the woman said unto, her, unto him, unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Adam, God told Adam, Adam told her, she told Satan. But what did Satan do? The serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. He lied. He lied just like that, that Amalekite. He lied. But see, Satan, his angels, they're reserved for uh, the, the fire, the, for the lake of fire. They ain't going in it yet. So he can do what he want to. For God doesn't know in the day to eat thereof that your eyes shall be open and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. He threw a lie with the truth. And that's what tell bearers do. That's what tell bearers do. They throw in lies with the truth, busybodies, tattletales, same thing. I told my kids, don't go up there and get that. But I'm quite sure my daughter was like, go ahead and get it. He ain't going to find out. And he won't do nothing if he do. Which made my youngest one go up there and do it. And they still got in trouble. They still. Now let's go to Matthew 13. He's the accuser. He said, God ain't going to do nothing. You ain't going to die. But they didn't have the knowledge that, yeah, you will die. You are going to die. You ain't going to live a thousand years as one day with the Lord, but you are not going to live one day as with the Lord. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Whoo, boy, this is going to be a three hour video. Oh, my goodness. Matthew 13, Matthew 13, verse 24, Matthew 13, verse 24, and the parable he put forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. But while the men slept, his enemy came and sowed the tares and sowed tares among the wheat. And went his way. And when the blade was sprung up, he brought forth fruit. Then, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence thou wert, uh, ah, whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. And the servant said unto him, will thou then that we go and gather them up? And he said, nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares. And bind them in the bundles and burn them and gather the wheat unto my barn. Now, there's, there's another two other parables that comes out. But the disciples, they really didn't understand the tear part that much. Right. So let's see. They asked the question. Can you explain what that one meant? And Jesus sent uh, then uh, verse 36. I'm sorry. 
Then Jesus sent the multitude away. And when he went into the house, the disciples came unto him saying, declare us unto the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said unto them, he that sowed the good seed is the son of man. Christ is the one that gave us this word. Right. And the field is the world. We live in the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are in the children of the wicked one. The enemy that soweth them is the devil. Uh, so what did the, what is the devil has done then? And what is he still doing now? He's making sure that he got tares among the wheat. That's why I'm saying. Even at the church, even at the camps. Wheat are growing among the tares. I mean, tares and wheats are growing together. That's why we got to have our spiritual eyes on. We still cheat. We still will treat everyone as a brother or as a sister. But you got to start recognizing who is who based off of their mouth and their actions. The enemy has sold them and is is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it shall be in the end of this world. What did I say? We're going to keep going. Yeah, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all the things that offend and them which do iniquity, and, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And then the righteous shall shine forth as the sun and kingdom of their father who has ear, who have ears to hear. Let them hear. Whoever got ears to this to this video. Hey, self check. This ain't about everybody else. Look at yourself, too, brothers and sisters. Look at yourself, too, people. Skip down to verse forty nine. So it shall be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from the just and shall and and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. We go to church, we go to camps, we go there because we're trying to escape the world. But Satan has planted wheat, I mean, planted tares in the churches and in the camps, too. When it comes to the Sunday doctrine church. A lot of them don't have the word. He don't care that much about that. He got to go into us. That's keeping the law. And try to stir up discord and strife with the tares, with the children of him. Let me add this in while I'm saying it. Go to Revelation. Did I read all the way to 50? Yeah, go to Revelation 12 again. Revelation 12. He has to sow discord among those that's trying to do this. Revelation 12. The last verse. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of a seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Christ. He already got Sunday doctrine people not keeping the law. That's not a problem to him. We're the problem. We are the ones that's keeping the law and got the testimony of Christ who said keep the law. So what does he do? He done put tears in our camps and churches too. This is why your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears got to be on high alert. You don't need to go around telling everybody, man, it's dude evil. The deep. Hey, okay, I just know, hey, till I see something better, because everybody got a chance to repent from what they're doing. I must say that because I don't want nobody talking about, oh, man, blah, 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 blah. But the weed and tears are doing it together. And break, I mean, the weed and tears are together. And those that are tail bearing 
of breaking the law. Let's go read the law. Let's go read the law. We didn't add the law and the testimony, but we're going to get it straight out of the book of Moses. One of the books of Moses. Let's go to Leviticus 19. Let's go to Leviticus 19. Whoo. I made this long. Maybe I do need to go on Sunday so I can take my time with it. During the Sabbath, I'll be rushing, you know, I'll be having to get done by 10. So Leviticus 19, verse 15. Leviticus 19, verse 15. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. And that happens a lot. Because talebearers have told somebody in power something about another person. Nine times out of ten, they lied about something, and now the person that's doing the judgment is judging unrighteously. Thou, sh oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. No, ye shall do no unrighteous judgment. In judgment, thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shall thou judge thy neighbor. You can't be, okay, you know, I'm going to get it due to pass because he rich. Or he got a position in my church or he got a position in, you know, my business or whatever. If he's doing wrong, you got to get on him about it. Now, we do have mercy. We got to give some type of grace and mercy the same way the Lord doing us. But if this continues, you eventually got to be like, all right, I, I can't trust this dude here. All in righteousness. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among the, thy people. Here's the talebearers now. They're the ones that's going up and down, telling everybody this stuff, running to their boss, running to the person who's leading whatever they're doing, running to their pastor, and saying stuff about another person. And then the other people, they're judging unrighteously. We all better recognize this because ain't nobody above the law. Nobody. Neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt not in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not hate thy neighbor in thy heart. Let me tell y'all tearing bearers something. Y'all make it difficult to keep this law. And I believe Satan knows it. And y'all know it too. I'm not supposed to hate any of my brothers, but the more and more they say something to me or say something to anybody else, and the same thing happens with y'all, you start to hate that person. Like, I can't stand this dude. I can't stand this sister. Because they always lie. But we're going to get to that. Verse 19, 18, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Another one that's hard to keep because of the tears. But we got to strive to keep it, people. That's the grace and mercy of the Lord. At least you trying. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Hey, Jesus didn't make that up on itself. By itself, I mean, uh, Mr. Christian and Mrs. Christian antagonist. He quoted the law. You don't have to keep the law no more. Jesus made his own law. Nope, right here. He quoted from the law. Let's go to Matthew 18. Not only quoted from the law, but everything we just read, he gave us instructions. Matthew 18, he gave us some instructions that people say they love Christ, but they ain't doing this. They not doing this here. Let's go to Matthew 18. Aha! Aha! Let's read what, the, what Christ said to do when there's problems amongst people. Matthew 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Not put him on blast on social media. Not run up and down as a tailbearer and telling everybody what this dude did to you. You're supposed to go to that person alone. How you do that on social media? Inbox. 
you go straight to somebody's inbox. These days, everybody got an inbox. They got an email. They don't probably on face. They probably put their phone number. Call the person. Remember, if you say you love Jesus, this is what Jesus he said. The words come out of my mouth. They come from the Father. If you love me, keep my commandments. Well, here's a commandment. This is what Christ is saying to do, to keep peace. Moreover, if that brother was trespassed against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained a brother. But that's not what tell bearers do. Let's read something else tell bearers don't do. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee two or more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word must be established. So you didn't try to talk to the person personally, right? And that didn't work. Now you're supposed to get at least two or three other people, tell them the matter, or just take them to the, the person you're talking to and explain the matter and let them help you regain your brother. All right. Then there's the third step. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen, a heathen man or a publican. This is what Christ said to do. Go to your brother first or your sister privately without telling another person. They don't want to hear you. Now go to another person. Tell them this person did this to me and they ain't. They ain't trying to resolve it with you. And then y'all go and you try to resolve it. Now you got witnesses to go to the church with you. Yeah, he did this. We all tried to talk to him. He still ain't hearing it. Now it's the church. But that's not what tail bearers do. Tail bearers immediately get on the phone and say, Pastor, Elder. I saw a brother as a teacher with a hat on his head. He shouldn't be doing that. That's right. This is why I made the last video and this video. Because of tail bearers. Those that watch the last video and those that know what the books say, they, you see me <laughs> told and said, I got a yarmulke on. This is a kufi. And I take it off when I open up the book and I put it on when I put it, because I like kufis. You're a tail bearer. You don't love Christ because you did not do it the way Christ said to do it. What you did is you saw something, you made a judgment, and you called the church. And that's folly. Repent. Whoever did it, repent. Whoever else does these things, you got a problem what's on my show. You call me first. If you can't do that, unfriend yourself and don't Watch me ever again. I'm about salvation. I'm about helping brothers and sisters. But if you want to pick every little thing without coming to me first. Let him be unto thee as a heathen man or a publican. Hallelujah. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But people don't do that. They run straight to the church. They don't walk up the steps. They take a running start and leap and go straight to the church. And then you wonder why people in the church talking among themselves. Yeah, this ain't fair. That ain't fair. Because tail bearers, the tail, the tares are among the wheat stirring up mischief. Stirring up mischief. And I'm going to tell you something. It upsets me. This is supposed to be a house of God. All of these churches that's teaching the same thing on one accord that's balanced, supposed to be a house of God. 
We're supposed to love one another. But again, what did the enemy do? He sold in tears. That's another reason why I'm doing this lesson, because we got to start recognizing with our eyes, with our ears, who's a talebearer? Who's stirring up discord? Who's not doing it the way Christ said to do it? Let's move on. Let's move on before I really get in my feelings. <laughs> Proverbs 27. Because I got to read this. This is according to social media now. So we know we're going to recap what Christ said. He said, go to your brother in private or your sister in private. Say it to them. They don't want to hear it. Get two or three other people. Go in private again. Make Hey, can I get your numbers? We can call you. Call them. They still don't get it. Then you go to the church, right? Then after that, let's go. To Proverbs 27. Because people are using this verse here <laughs> as an excuse to put people on blast on social media. <laughs> and it's and, and I'm going to just warn folks. You, you, <laughs> let's read this. Proverbs 27 verse 5. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Open rebuke means going to your brother or your sister, like Christ said, and openly speaking and saying to them, you have hurt me. You have done something to me that I don't like. That's giving that person a chance to repent. That's what open rebuke means. Not I'm going to blast this person on, set on, on social media now. Open rebuke is better than secret love. One-on-one -on -one open rebuke. They don't want to hear it. Then you get witnesses. Open rebuke again. They don't want to hear it. You go to the church, open rebuke again. Then you treat them as a publican if they're that stubborn and don't want to change. Or don't even want to repent and apologize for what they've done. But open rebuke is better than secret love does not mean he or she done made me mad, and now I'm going to put them on blast on social media. Y'all are folly for that. But we is real. We don't want to do what does say of the Lord. What happens when someone continues to do that? Let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes. I got two. Oh, no. I forgot. I almost skipped over this. So we know the open rebuke is, is supposed to be in private, not blasting on, on uh, social media, right? Because I've, I've seen this so many times. Let's go to 1 Timothy. Because I got to do another balance thing here. Even though we talk about tail bears, let's talk about the sisters. And then we're going to talk about the brothers. Let's go to 1 Timothy. What is that? 5. Let's read some things that Paul had wrote in, in answers <laughs> to some questions about letters that was written to him. I need a new Bible, man. My page is just like, ugh. 1 Timothy 5. We're going to start at verse 9. Now, even though family this is talking about widows sisters this is about you all right verse 9 timothy 5 and 9 let not a widow be taken into the number under the three under three score years old having been a wife of one man well reported for good works if she have brought up children if she have lodged strangers if she have washed the saints feet if she have she has relieved the afflicted, if she have diligent diligently followed every good work, but the younger widows refuse, for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith, and with Hall they learn to be idle. They have nothing to do. 
The idle mind is a playground of the devil. Do you want to get funky with me? Do you want to? Wandering from about from house to house and not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies speaking things which they ought not. This applies to everybody these days. Married women is being busy bodies because you're at the crib, probably with nothing to do. And I'm just, I ain't just talking about that even in the workplace. That's why them TV shows is on. Calling up sisters. Yeah, blah, blah. You heard about girls, girl, girl, girl. Read this again. And with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house and not idle. I mean, not only idle, but tattlers. Also, busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary. Who's the adversary? <laughs> Satan and his angels. To speak reproachfully. Go back and look at the head covering, sisters. But some already turned aside after Satan. Wow. This is about the sisters. Bored, don't know what to do. Let's get on the phone and cause some mischief. Wandering from house to house as tattlers and busybodies. I hope it wasn't a sister that called and said, Pastor? I was watching Brother Azza, and he be teaching with a yarmulke on his head. Idle, nothing to do. Letting the angels, or Satan himself, get into your mind and not. <laughs> and judging a matter before seeing the whole matter. Mm. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians, brothers. Let's balance this out. I always try to balance it out. I don't want nobody talking about, oh, brother, as a picking on the sisters again. No, I ain't picking on the sisters. I pick on everybody, including myself, those that know me. I read something out the book and be like, man, I just cut myself. Second Thessalonians. We just read what, what, what uh, Paul has said about, oh, I need a new Bible. <laughs> My page is falling to pieces, y'all. But we just read what Paul said about the sisters being busybodies, being tail bearers or tattlers in his case, and also, okay, come on. I know it's right here now. Age is sticking together. Man. Being busybodies, being tattlers, wandering from house to house, saying things that they ought not. That's why, again, sister, you got to watch what you're watching on TV. Because, again, that, that Housewives of uh, Atlanta and all of that stuff. What's that other one that's on? The Midgets? The Little Women of something like that? Come on. Come on, people. All right, here we go. Second, Th Second Thessalonians 3. Now let's get on the brothers. Let's get on the brothers because brothers are tattletales and gossipers too. Don't say gossiping is just for the women. Brothers gossip too. Second Thessalonians 3. We're going to start at verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly. You got a brother that's, that you know is breaking the law all the time. Hey, I walk what? Withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us, which is the law and the testimony that Paul Okay, again, for those that don't know, all the epistle, all of the stuff that Paul wrote was an answer 
to letters that he got. He was writing these people back and he was letting them know according to the question that they asked. But we will never see those questions. But the Lord saw it fit for this to be in there for us to understand his will. OK, now. For yourselves, I'm going to start it again now concern you, brother, in the name of the Lord of Jesus Christ, that ye you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh dis uh, disorderly and not after the tradition which he received from us. This means that Paul taught these Thessalonians. He taught them what the book say. And now he's telling them, if ain't, ain't nobody walking the way we taught you to walk, withdraw yourself from them. For yourselves, know how ye ought to follow us. For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. We didn't come to you acting outside of the, 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 the will of God. Neither did we eat any man's bread for, not, for naught, which means for nothing but wrought with labor and travail day and night that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensample to you to follow us. He's saying we did these things to be an example. And that's the way we're supposed to be walking, to be an example to other people to walk the same way. And tail bearing is not an example of Christ. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any man would not work, neither should he eat. If you ain't working, you ain't you shouldn't eat. You gotta be doing something, brothers. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. Oh, so that's their mind is I is, is being idle too, <coughs> brothers. Modern day, there's another word we call brothers like that. It start with a B too. But I can't say it. For we hear that there are some which walk among, walk among you disorderly, uh, walking not at all. I mean, working not at all. So they're disorderly. They ain't walking. And what are they called? But are being busybodies. They are being called a B with another word, N. That's what we call them today. This B N. This is what. <laughs> they're being that's what they are today starting mischief idle got nothing to do now them that such now them that are such command and exhort by the lord jesus christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread but ye brethren be not weary in well doing and if any man obey not our word by this epistle Note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. So he's saying with these brothers, don't keep company with them. Why? Because after a while, if nobody's keeping company with them, they're going to be wondering why. Why don't nobody want to talk to me no more? Why don't nobody want to keep company with me? That's when everybody could come together like Christ. Be like, dude, you talk too much. You need to get a job. Because you ain't doing nothing but sitting at the crib thinking of plans to get people in. And that's why I don't none of us want to be bothered with you. But that person can't be in the mindset of, man, y'all y'all crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. They don't want to receive it? Okay. What did he say? Keep not company with them. Count him as not an count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Warn him. You're warning him, dude. You start too much stuff. And if you don't want to hear it, keep not company with him. Plain and simple. So that's to the brothers. 
If anybody is idle, they're going to keep mischief. And I can't believe I went this long. Two more scriptures and we done. See, there were scriptures that I took out yesterday, but I guess the Lord wanted me to put them in here. And that's why I'm doing it again now. I don't normally do three hour videos. <laughs> okay, let's go to Ecclesiastes 7. So that's for the brothers and for the sisters. If you have nothing to do, your, your mind is being idle. That you're you're prone. Ecclesiastes, right. You're prone to become a tail bearer, busy body or a tattletale. That's why we got to get that out of our heart. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 1. A good name is better than precious ointment. It is good to have a good name. Evidently, the one that Paul was talking about in 2 Thessalonians with the brothers don't have good company with, uh, with him. He doesn't have a good name. His name is a bad name. Do you want to hang around that brother? He talked too much. He always starting stuff and stuff. That's a bad name. A good name is better than precious ointment. And the day of the death is the day of, I mean, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. It is good to have a good name. It's good to be a person that brothers and sisters could be like, man, I trust this brother. I got some issues I need to get off my chest. And I know if I tell him, he ain't going to tell nobody else. But if it's, I can't tell that person. They tell me somebody else's stuff all the time. And they go around and tell my stuff. Because the good name isn't going to do that. Actually, the good name is going to try to help the person. Give them scripts out the Bible. Brothers and sisters did it for me in my depression. I try to do the same thing. Verse five, to have a good name. Verse five, it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise. And for a man, I got to tell this story again. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. Okay, I told this story yesterday. Last summer, those that know me know I got a problem with cheese. I love cheese. People have called me a cheese connoisseur. If you're wondering why I got all this on me, because I be eating too much cheese. Bad foods, too. I need to get healthy again. I need to exercise again, too. But I had went last summer. I said I wasn't going to eat no cheese. All right. I'm in Walmart. I go in there and I'm telling you, I saw the cheese line up and I was like, yeah, I'm going to get, no, I'm not going to get, yeah, you no, know, yeah, no, yeah, no. And I got to the, to the doorway. I didn't buy the cheese. I got in the car, but I'm telling you, it seemed like something was like, go back and get the cheese, right? So the way I got rid of that wanting to go back to get the cheese I went on social media live. I went on Facebook live. <laughs> and I was acting like I was crying. I'm sitting there like, oh, man, man, I don't believe this, man. What's going on? I couldn't I won't let nobody see if there was tears, right? I'm like, man, man y'all pray for me, man. Somebody pray for me, man. And I saw I could look like this. You can see my eye. I was looking like this at the comments. People were like, man, what's wrong, man? What? Man, and I'm sitting there like, man, these cheese demons, man, these cheese demons is messing with me, man. I just went in the store, man. I was just trying not to buy no cheese. I walk out and the cheese demons was like, come on, man, you know you want us. I was playing, all right? I wasn't serious. Those that remember it, it was hilarious, right? However, there were people that were offended. I didn't know this. I was young and foolish in this era, in this arena, I mean. There are people that have dealt with demons and didn't find it funny what I was saying. Right? Now, they could have called me directly, but no, they called the church. They didn't do the steps, but they called the church. I get to the church, and this is why I'm saying 
It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise. I get to the church and people was coming to me, man, man. That was hilarious, man. That was it. But it wasn't hilarious to everybody. So when I saw a brother that I was needed to talk to about something, I went up to him. I greeted him and said, hey, brother, what's going on? But the elder that he was sitting there talking with saw me who ain't even on social media and said, I need to talk to you for a second. And, he, and then the other brother, he walked off. He pulled my elder, pulled me to the side and he explained to me that, you know, demons ain't nothing to joke about. He's he's gotten rid of demons out of people. He's seen people face messing up to get the demons out. He's like, that stuff is real. And I took the rebuke of the wise. I didn't get mad and say, man, you can't man, I do what I want. No, I was like, OK. Because I respect that elder. Highly do I respect that elder. So the next day I get on social media and I say, I apologize. I say, hey, whoever I offended, I took that video down and then I put up another one and said, hey, whoever I offended, I apologize. And why did I do all that? Because I took the rebuke of the wise. I didn't have then a man to hear the song of fools. He did this in private, the way Jesus said to do. The other people didn't, but he did it in private. Other people could have hit me up. Hey, man, that's nothing to play with. I, what do you mean? Man, I, I could have got this directly from you, people, instead of calling the church, instead of skipping the three-step program that the Lord said to keep peace. Verse 9, be not hasty in thy spirit, to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. So if someone is correcting you privately, don't be ready to be angry about it and defensive. I still got that issue. I ain't going to lie. People tell me things, and I be like, man, what? I got to take a couple of days. Yeah, a couple of hours, but sometimes a couple of days. So I don't snap at the person. Yeah, we all fighting battles, and I still got Battles that I'm fighting too. Verse 20. But there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Also take heed unto all words that are spoken, lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. For oftentimes also thine own knoweth that thou thyself likewise has cursed others. That's why. I have to always, all of us got to always remember, I was foolish once. I don't need to be tripping like that. As a tail bearer, I've told people things I shouldn't have done in the past. So I don't really need to trip on the tail bearers, but I need to tell these tail bearers, y'all need to stop tripping. Especially when it comes to me. <laughs> Let's go to Ephesians 4. It's the last one. It's almost 12 o'clock. Wow. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, man. We're supposed to be having some type of peace among us. But we got these tears among the wheat. But we still got to act like wheat. And it's, it's difficult at times. But that's why I said I'm going to do this lesson. Especially after the phone call I got about my kufi on my head. Ephesians 4, verse 1. Therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you all that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with lowliness and meekness and with long suffering. Forbearing one another in love. I know tail bearers are going to continue to do what they're doing. I know that they are, but I still got to forbear them in love. I be knowing who the tail bearers are sometimes, and I still be like my brother, my sister. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. In the bond of peace. That's the whole thing. Lord is the king of peace amongst his children. He don't want to see his children fight. 
But he know that the enemy has sold in some tears amongst his children who has his children fighting. And that's what we're supposed to continue to try to cheat, treat each other as brothers and sisters. But do a self check. and Make sure that you are not a tail bearer. I thank you for watching. Hope you're not a tattletale, busybody. Please share the video. I love y'all with the love of Christ, man. So I'll see y'all Saturday. Hopefully I get a good connection. I don't have these problems again. Or maybe I'll see you Sunday. All glory to the Father in the mighty name of Jesus. Peace. Wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up.